Hello, my friends. This is Stella. I am here to share with you about Revelation, the Book of Revelation.、Uh, I'm making these videos、um, for those, especially those individuals who have left Shincheonji and are struggling how to understand the Book of Revelation. And I have been spending and exploring a lot on this issue as well. After leaving, and what is the right way of under understanding the revelation? I think the hundred percent sure it will be Christ who will really lead us to truth when He comes back. And、um, I'm not gonna say I'm going to look at all the details of each chapter, each phrase, but as I'm praying and having meditation and. Um, asking God to really reveal Himself to us, reveal Himself to me.、Uh, there are some things that He has revealed to me, and I wanted to share with you guys.、Um, this is a message of hope. This is a message of encouragement to to us, and I'm so thankful that I got to share this with you guys. So this is very、um, important for me to share this. I've been spending several days preparing for this, maybe a week. But even before that, it took me many weeks to even get to this point or months. So here I am. I want to talk to you guys about Revelations、um, chapters one to three. It talks about mainly the seven churches and what are this really about. First of all, we need to know that the revelation is about the testimony of Jesus Christ. The first chapter, it is about our Christ, His second coming, and what's going to happen. And、um, in chapter one, describes about how He will come, what He looks like. How he's dressed in robe. He has this golden sash around his chest. He has white hair, blazing fiery eyes. His voice is like rushing waters. His face is like sun. So we see, we can see that not everything will be literal, especially if we know that、uh, this edging sword、uh, is coming out of his mouth. So this book, as you all know. Many of you know, it is about a lot of symbols and describing things with human language to describe the kingdom of God and Christ with this limited language of human. Of course, there are limitations to to portray the image of God, Christ, and also how He works. And、uh, it is still a mystery, and yet. John is trying his best to help us with how it is so. We see that in chapter one, verse twenty, there are、um, seven golden sands, which means seven churches.、And、there are three, seven stars being sent to seven angels. Uh, uh, seven stars being described as seven angels of seven churches. And we know that angel here means messenger.、Uh, if you look at、um, other verses or the description of its the the word. So if you look at all of these descriptions, something that should catch your attention is that there is something about this、um, language of the tabernacle in Old Testament. What we need to know is the revelation is full of figurative figures,、um, symbols, and a lot of those coming from Old Testament. And here we see priestly, priestly clothing, priest stand, lamb stands, and later on we see a lot of priest, high priest, and incense pointing us、uh, to think about the image of tabernacle. Of God in Old Testament, and also the golden sash around the chest that Jesus has. It also 
points us to think about the high priests, what they wear. In Exodus chapter 28, verse 4, it talks about priest clothing, breast piece, effort, a robe, a woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So yeah, a lot of those terms we see point back to uh, the tabernacle. But what is it really about? And we also know that Hebrews 4, 14 to 16, it talks about Jesus as our priest. So there is certainly something going on about the tabernacle. But how much do we know about the sanctuary, the tabernacle, the temple of God? Why was it so important that God show that um, visibly to Moses so that he could see it and build the same thing on the earth? What was it really about? How could we... Um, neglect the concept of temple, what it is, uh, when we're trying to understand the book of Revelation. So we see golden stands in the temple in Exodus chapter 25, and the lamb stands in the temple. Uh, it will help us to understand what it means that Jesus Christ is referring the lamb stands as churches. Don't we have churches in our current times and churches are still ongoing and we are still, we are also part of the church, a church or churches. So we need to know what he's trying to say about these churches in, in, um, in regards to the temples and the, the lampstands in the temple so that we will know the connection and what he's trying to say. So let's talk about the temple. What is inside the temple? We know, um, if you look at, if you Google it, you can see an image very easily and you can see what is inside of this temple and what's around it. There's this holy place where there's this ark. Um, in the ark, there are laws, the Ten Commandments of God. The law of God is there. And in the holy place, not the most holy, the holy place, there's this table of showbread, uh, which represent the word of God uh, in many places, such as Matthew chapter 4 and 4. You don't, you don't live by just bread, but by the word of God. And we see lamb stands. There's this oil to burn always, always to burn. And um, in many places, we know the oil represents Holy Spirit and the anointment and um, of Christ meant to be with the Spirit of God. And in, even in Isaiah 61 uh, verse 1, anointment was the Spirit of God. It, this is in par parallel. Um, in Matthew chapter 25, it also talks about how lamp cannot be lit without, uh, with oil, without oil. You need to have the oil. So five virgins who were wise looking uh, for to meet their bridegrooms and they needed to have oil. Those foolish uh, five virgins didn't have the oil. So the, the connection of oil and light with the with the presence of Holy Spirit, we can light, we can become the light. We'll see what it could mean. Altar of incense. Incense, uh, the revelation itself explains what it means. It's the prayers of uh, his people in Revelations chapter 5, verse 8, or in verse um, chapter 8, verse 3 to 4 as well. Outside the temple, there's this laver or basin where you have the water to cleanse yourself before going into the temple and also the altar of burnt offering where you burn uh, the offerings, to offer sacrifices for each sin. So let's go back to the concept of temple in a very general picture, a really big picture. Temple itself is a dwelling place of God where we meet God. God said, I'm going to meet you here. This is where I'm going to meet you. 
And this is where we also, humans, um, where we used to also offer sacrifices for all kinds of sins in Old Testament. So you see, we have this temple that was physical and literal. It was a building and we had priests and high priests. But, um, uh, interestingly though, we have a different temple in New Testament. And what is a different temple? A dwelling place of God where we can meet God, where we can have this bridge and connection with God, reconciliation with God, forgiveness. Where we could see God was through Christ in, in the New Testament this time. When Jesus came, he himself became the temple for us. He himself became the offering for us. You know, it's interesting because everything inside the temple points back to Jesus. This is why the temple is very important. First, Ark. The Ark of Covenants. Uh, the, Jesus is the end of the law. Jesus is the creator uh, and Jesus is the end of the law. Matthew 5 17 do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them and Romans chapter 10 4 Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes and how about the table of showbread the, the bread Jesus himself said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John chapter 6, 3, 5. And he said, the manna, the manna, the bread of show, the table, the table of show bread represented manna that the Israelites used to get from the heaven. And, um, it's interesting that that manna Jesus referred to and himself as the manna from heaven, the bread of life. The people who eat that bread will live eternally. So he was also there in the table of showbread. How about stands? The lamb stands. Jesus was anointed with Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 10, 38 and Luke 4, 18. So the Holy Spirit was with Jesus, the whole time he was on the earth, I am the light of the world, Jesus said. Whoever follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So he was also with the Holy Spirit, and he was the one lightning, light to the world of darkness. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. That is explicitly uh, said here in Revelation 21, 23. It says we don't need that sun, moon, and the light anymore. Why? Because we have the light and the Lamb. The Lamb of God, Christ Jesus, is the lamp. So we know that He Christ. Christ Jesus was also the lamp, um, uh, representing the lamp stands in the temple. How about the offering, the altar of incense? The man of prayer was Jesus Christ, who showed us how to pray, who showed the example of how to pray to Father God. Um, in Matthew six six to thirteen, how about basin? Um, the the where you have water to cleanse yourself it is through blood of christ we could cleanse our sins justified through his blood in romans chapter 5 8 we brought closer to god through his blood ephesians 2 13 also representing baptism as you can see i'm i'm having so much congested condensed here i want you to really think through one by one maybe if possible you can pause and go to each scripture that i'm mentioning and just see it to yourself another thing is the altar of burnt offering he became the offering for us hebrew 9 28 once and for all he paid everything for us so that we don't have to offer the animals anymore you know, one thing I want to share with you is that it is true that um, not everything uh, about 
the method of Xin Junji looking at the Bible is wrong. We can look at different verses in each book of the Bible. Uh, and we can see what each word meant. Uh, each word can mean spiritually. It, it's not bad. And sometimes God does use and God does explain what each word means. But we have to know the, the whole concept of the Bible. Like what is he trying to say throughout the whole Bible? Throughout the whole Bible, he's talking about him sending us Messiah, uh, the Son of God who is coming and who is going to come again in Revelation again and finishing everything for us. And each, everything really points back to Christ. Like the tabernacle, the temple of God. The temple was um, referring to Christ again. Each thing that he was showing us, he's showing us and reminding us what Christ does. You know, the basin, we are being cleansed through his blood. We are being forgiven because of his suffering himself. Each is representing Christ, what he does for us, what he did for us. And it's amazing how the more we get to know about it, the more we get to be blessed and see who Christ Jesus is really for us and what he's doing for us. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you. So temple, as you can see, as I could, I've been sharing with you, is Christ. and. Um, just like I share with you, Revelation 21, 22, I did not see a temple in the city. Why? Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The temple was the Lamb. The temple is the Lamb. The Bible itself is saying that to us. So now we know the temple was given to us not to just have a building to worship God, but because it was a represented representation of christ he is our temple he is the dwelling place of god he was and he is where we can meet god we can meet god through him every concept in the bible just comes down to this the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of god gives it light and the lamb is its lamp revelation 21 23 so Jesus is image of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Colossians 1.15 The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. The God of this age is not referring to Jesus, it's Satan. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that the mind, they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 2 Corinthians Four, four. So everything comes down to what again? The image of God. Jesus was showing us who God is. And through him, who is the temple, who was temple on this earth and who is still the temple for us, is representing God and is showing us who God is. So temple represents Christ and who also also represents God, the Father. But temple also represents us. That's fascinating for me. First Corinthians three sixteen. I have been sharing this in many places and other videos with you. But don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? So the concept of temple, the dwelling place of God, is also applying to us. We are. The place where he can dwell within us, dwell in the Spirit of God, the dwelling place of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is right here. He's calling ourselves, he's calling us as the temple of God, not just Christ, not just God, not just a building, but our minds, our spirit, us, we are also the temple of God. We bear the image of God. We have the possibility and potential to do that. And we were created to do that. So this is why Satan tries to destroy us. 
destroy the temple of God where God can dwell in. You know, uh, when we are doing, when we are addicted to something physically, He is trying to destroy our body, the temple of God, physically. So He destroy us, giving us the destruction and death, because death comes from Him. Um, the evil comes to destroy us, kill us, when Jesus came to give us life to the fullest. Um, he wants to occupy this temple with his spirit, not the other spirit. I'm talking about Christ, but the Satan wants to also occupy this temple with his spirit instead of God's spirit. So we are having this spiritual battle within ourselves. Are we going to let God to dwell within us or Satan? It's not just about an individual, but God has called all of us to be on temple, his temple. Not just one individual. He called us to be the temple, his dwelling place, where we can have that connection with him, where we can be one with God. So in John 17, 21, that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am you, in you. May they be also in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. That is the unity that God longs to have with us. Not just one particular person, but all of us. Through Christ, we have received the forgiveness of our sins and we can be cleansed and washed. So if you think about the temple, that's what I'm talking about. The temple or outside, from the outside to go to go into the temple inside of the holy holy place and the most holy place. We have the offering place first. Because of Christ who have died for us, we have this forgiveness. Forgiveness and reconciliation with God. We can now go cleanse ourselves through the Christ's blood and go into the temple, have this relationship with God. And not just, this is not everything, having the forgiveness of God, having been, been uh, cleansed by the blood of Christ is not everything. We still continue our journey in the temple. We have our prayers, incense going up, we read his words, get his bread, word of God, and we are also with His Spirit, and the oil, and the light. And more than anything, in the most holy place, we have the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments that will not change. They were, they're always there that He wanted to, to protect with so much, uh, um, what is it, two angels were covering the ark that much of an importance it was covering angels to cover and protect the ark of the covenants the ten commandments that will not change they represented god and his rules and his character so let's go back to the lampstands as churches why is John referring this or why is God referring lampstand as churches in Revelation 120? So what is church or what is a church? A community of individuals, God's people. All those individual temples, all those individual temples gathered together to represent God. So what is the role of a church? Jesus has told us to go make disciples in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go make disciples to the end of the age. And his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, Ephesians 3, 10. So through church, the wisdom of God was to be shown. The church is to show and represent the wisdom of God to the world. Not just this world, but the heavenly rulers and everything. And proclaim God's excellency and praise Him as priest. 1 Peter 2.9 But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You see, we have been called to be priests. The priest was also Christ Jesus, who, called, who was a uh, holy priest. Um, according to Hebrews 4, as I shared with you, and he is also calling us to be priests for God. Not just temple, he's also calling us temple, but also the priest to represent God, to be holy, chosen people, and mm, give all the glory to him. So we're set apart to be God's people. We're to be the light shine before others. Matthew 5, 14, 15. That is the role of churches. That is the role of priests. That is what we're called to be. To be the light to the world. And represent God. To be priests for the world. And to give all the glory to Him. And have this relationship with God. Only when we are able to be in the temple we have this connection with him reconciliation peace with god so in revelation 2 3 i mean chapters 2 to 3 it talks about churches um and it's about how god is sending this message to the churches churches are to represent god but they were going astray. Jesus is saying, you know, you were doing it well, but now you're doing it this way. You have to be cautious. You have to be care careful of these people or this individual or what you're doing. He's giving them a message of caution. Please be warned. Sending the angels, sending the messengers to give them the message for repentance. You see, the message of repentance message for repentance has been the case has been the message from the beginning all throughout old testament the prophets they have been proclaiming the message of repentance repent the kingdom of god is here the kingdom of god is near it's coming soon repent turn to god that is what repentance means turn to god Churches, you're supposedly to represent God. You're supposedly the priest for God. You're supposedly the temples of God, dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. But you are far from it. You're going astray. You need to repent. The message of repentance. Not just a single person, but to everyone. So we see that in uh, the end of each uh, passage. That he's uh, sending this message to. He's sending this message to, to seven churches. But at the end of each church, he says, Who has an ear? Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Not just one person. Who has an ear? Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The message of repent. The kingdom of God is coming. So he says this. Revelations uh, 3, 19-20. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. He's doing this not because he doesn't love us. He's doing this not because he's trying to punish us. He's doing this because he loves us. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. And he be with me. Isn't that the message of hope for us? That he's so willing to wait for us, patient with us. Please, I know you're going astray, but that doesn't mean that everything's end. Everything's the end. He's still knocking on the door, telling us to repent, meaning he's still giving us the chance. I want to eat with you. I want to be one with you. I want to be dwelling in you. You are my temple. You are my priest. Please go back to him. Be the holy temple for him. Be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit. Um, that is 
the message he had for the churches. The stand uh, was the oil to be continually burning daily, according to Exodus 27, 21. Daily, even into the morning, the priests were, uh, were to go and check it. The oil was to be continually burning. The stand was representing what? We were to be with Holy Spirit and be the light continually. Table of showbread, the bread to be continually there. Daily reading the word of God. And it's interesting um, that he was, uh, he, God told his people to receive this bread every Sabbath. Leviticus 24, 8. Every Sabbath. Why? It, taught, it reminds you, it reminded them of what happened to them in the desert. What happened to them when they were in the desert for 40 years. He gave them the manna, the heavenly bread, the food coming from the heaven. And every Sabbath, they were to rest. They were not to gather the, the bread. Each day, they were to go out and gather the bread. But on Sabbath, they didn't have to. They could do that on Friday. Uh, and everything was so prepared. And God, for, uh, God was preparing them for the Sabbath so they could have this relationship with God. It was a reminder. Uh, this day was given so that they could remind themselves of who God is as a creator. Exodus 31, 12 to 18. So it's interesting that even uh, the frequency of resetting the bread uh, was to be reminding them of who God is to them. The altar of incense, the, they were to reset this every morning. The altar of incense is what? Prayer. We constantly pray. We are to do that every morning and we continually. They were to reset that every morning. Exodus 37. And the Ark, the Ten Commandments, unchanging laws. I want to say this, it's not just something spiritually only, but also physically. It is true that He, Jesus Christ, has come and told us about spiritual meanings, deeper meanings of each commandment. But it didn't mean that we don't do that physically as well. He also came and didn't abolish the laws. He came to give us the full, deeper meaning of each commandment uh, and also kept those laws physically as well. Physically. And that is a very important aspect for us to remember. We don't just not kill uh, spiritually, but we don't kill physically as well. We don't just not hate others. Um, Jesus said, killing, uh, hate, hating your brother is also killing. But that doesn't mean that we don't we can we can kill others and other brothers. He means we keep physically and spiritually as well. He came to give us all those things of the temple to show us physically tangible things of the the of the temple to see that we are to do this and we are to remind ourselves of of how heaven works, who Christ is for us. It is unfortunate that we forget many things. We know, yes, we want to praise God. We want to worship Him always, but we forget. That is why He has given us this reminder. Reminder of the priest, let's say, having to constantly go there and burn the oil. Having to constantly go in there to, um, to have the incense. And also, always resetting the bread every Sabbath. Daily reminder, Sabbath reminder, weekly remi reminder. And we also have this laws of Ten Commandments that are not changing. Physical things are given not to just negate them and think about spiritual things only. But physical things are given so that we could keep them and also keep them spiritually as well. God, Jesus himself also came and did that. Um, I just wanted to go over that because um, keeping the laws physically is also important. All those Ten Commandments.
what is it really trying to say in those in those chapters i'm going over uh, chapter one to three he's saying churches you are the temples of god i am calling you guys to be priests but what are you guys doing you're going astray you're you're going far from me i know i'm talking about so many different things temple is a huge topic but this is important i wanted to share this with you because temple itself represented christ if you don't remember any of those things i said you need to remember that temple was christ and temple was christ and he is calling us to be temples he was also priest doing the god doing the work for god giving the glory to god the dwelling place of god as a temple he's also calling us to be priests calling us to be kingdom calling us to be priest the dwelling place of god that is the theme throughout revelation and he's called, giving us the last call for repentance i'm going to come soon guys i'm going to come soon i want to meet you i want to um, be united with you but unless you're with me unless you're temple of god unless you have the mind ready for me i cannot be reunited with you we might be occupied with some different kind of evil spirit so god is calling us repent turn to me i am here knocking on the door for you i have given you forgiven you and i've given you the eternal life but i want you to receive it be the priest be the temple i want to be with you and this is what i see in revelations one to three um the message of hope message of repentance message of love even that god so loves us so much so much so that he wants to be with us he wants to be dwelling in us sorry if i have repeated so many things but i just wanted to emphasize how important it is to study the temple i want you to go to the old testament and study it yourself if you want if you desire it will really open your eyes to see the temple was not just given for nothing god has given this to us so that we could study about it so that we could see christ in each thing and that is what we're called to the priest and the temple thank you